Hi there guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. Today we're gonna see the bubble sort algorithm. The bubble sort algorithm comes and have its name thanks to a great intuition. If you think about champagne glasses from the very bottom to the very end, from the very top, those bubbles are getting bigger and bigger again. So they get sorted in an ascending order. And great algorithms comes from great intuition. I think it's useful to understand where this name comes from just to get the main intuition behind it. Never mind, let's get back to the code. So let's define a bubble function that we'll like to sort an array. The first thing that we, we are supposed to do is to get how many elements do I get in there? And this is done by the length of the array in Python. Now, it's where the funny part begins. I need to check every single element and I need to see if that element is bigger to the next one. If it is, I can swap those elements until I'm moving the biggest to the very end of my array, like bubbles in a champagne glass that goes from the very bottom to the very end. That's the intuition. So for every single element <clears throat> in my array, and for, I need to check if that element is bigger to the next. So I, for every single element, I don't want to check the element that I already checked and I want to check the last one. F the array at j position is bigger to the array at the next position, j plus one, just swap them. Python has a very convenient way to do this without a third variable, and this is how it goes. <clears throat> Here you go. So if this condition is met, swap the elements at those specific index. And let's return the final array that we have. Let's test it. Let's create an array of integers. And let's print the sorted array. Here we go. It has been sorted in an ascending order just because I used these signs. What if I took this? <laughs> the right opposite, of course. And this is all of it. The bubble sort is a very straightforward algorithm, very simple, very direct, not that very efficient because it has two for loops nested, but this is not a topic. This is the big goal. So the number of operations that an algorithm is supposed to do without keeping an eye on software, programming languages, hardware, and so on. Well, if you, thought, if you think that you found this video useful, please leave a thumbs up and share it because we need and we have to Pythonize the world. Thank you.